Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has images in their archive that you like, but for some reason you've never dared to edit them or shown them to anyone because something is just not quite right with them. Now that may have many reasons, for instance you've been out and got a bit too excited, had the wrong camera settings dialed in and the image is way underexposed or way overexposed, or maybe something has been in the background or in front of your subject kind of ruining the image. Or you may have simply taken these images a few years ago with older cameras and older editing software available so you were just not able to get the maximum image quality and good noise performance out of these photos and kind of disregarded them and never edited them. But lucky for us, things have changed and now we can get some stunning results out of these disregarded photos. Of course, getting perfectly exposed and great looking raw files in the field should be the ultimate goal of every photographer but things don't always work out that way, do they? So sometimes it may be best to just discard not perfect images and try again, but other times it's simply not possible and you captured an amazing moment that's definitely worth rescuing and that's what I wanna help you with today. The first image is of a sanderling that I photographed almost 20 years ago at the Baltic Sea coast in Germany. And this is right at the beginning of my photography career. I had just gotten a 1D Mark II end camera and invested in an F4 500mm lens. And I was so excited to finally be able to lie down, get a good perspective on the birds and also a nice and smooth background. However, at the same time, for some reason, it had crept into my head that you cannot blow any highlights in a bird photo. So what happened? I severely, and I mean severely, underexposed all these photos. Even the white birds look almost black. So I just disregarded them. But for this video, I looked through them again and thought, one of these I actually quite like and I would like to edit it because it's probably one of my better sandaling photos and it's probably worth rescuing as well. Because we don't have to do any crazy masking or too many selective edits, I will edit this first image in Lightroom and don't even open Photoshop. But later on in the other images, you will see that there's still a lot of advantages to learn Photoshop image editing because you can do a lot more precise editing, do more selective editing with more ease and get better and faster results in the end. So I like both and that's also why we're gonna use Photoshop and Lightroom in this video. Because I have my process, it's actually ridiculously easy these days to edit an image like this and I can do it with one click. I just go into Lightroom, go to the profile section, select my oops, I underexpose process and with the one click and a few minor tweaks, I would already have a perfect image. So if you want to learn all about the one click raw editing and my process, check them out down there in the description. But for this video, I want to teach you something. So I'm not going to use this process. I'm going to go back into Lightroom, use a different profile so we can actually see what tweaks you have to make if you can't get it done in the one click. So let's do that. I've now opened the image in Lightroom and you can see it's really, really dark. So the first thing I'm going to do is just light exposure a little bit so I can see what changes are actually happening on the photo. And then I want to select the right color profile. In this case, I want to use one of my pro sets and my go-to one is definitely the vibrant more contrast. So let's see what it does in this image. And it gives us a nice colors in the background and also a little bit more detail on the bird. However, when we zoom in, even though we can't zoom in very far with an eight megapixel file, we see there's a lot of sort of noise coming up and Luckily, I only shot the image at ISO 200, so even pulling it up two or three stops will not increase too much noise in the photo. But at the same time, I want to get rid of this noise. So I'm just going to go right click, enhance, and then we're just going to remove the noise at about sort of 45%. And there we go. Now we have a pretty nice and noise free looking photo. First of all, I see a lot of unfortunate sensor dust spots there. So I just go to the tool here, just going to remove these, one more there, and next I want to make sure that the image is nice and bright, so I will brighten the overall image to the point where the bird's getting just too bright, and then I pull the highlights back a little bit. I also think the image looks a little bit washed out now, so I'm going to go a little bit in with the dehaze. Give that bird a little bit more bite and the background a little bit more color. And I'm also going to add a little bit of vibrance to the whole image and a little bit more saturation. And so with a few clicks, we're already not too far away, but I also want to do a little bit of individual editing on the bird. So I go over here to the masks and I let Lightroom select my subject. As we can see, it does a pretty good job. For instance, here between the legs, 
it doesn't really get it. So we could use a brush and clean it up. But I think in this case, because we're not going to do anything crazy, we get away with this sort of sloppy mask and go from there. So now over here, I have all my changes available that I can do within this mask. And so for instance, I want to pull the highlights back a little bit more on the bird. And I also want a bit more punch in the bird. So I'm going to add a bit more blacks to the bird. And I also think it looks a little bit yellow. So I'm just trying to cool down the bird a little bit and maybe give it a slightly more magenta tinge. And then I'll also just sort of desaturate the colors in the bird as well. And that's basically just sort of separating the bird and the background a little bit. And then we also want to work on the background a little bit so we can go over here to the oops. We can go to the mask, create another mask and say, select the background. So you can see here did a good job again. It just missed one part of the bird here and sort of between the legs. But because we don't do any crazy changes, again, we can get away with a slightly sloppy mask. And in this case, I think I might just want to either darken or brighten the background. This can be your personal choice now. In this case, I almost feel like the darker background looks better even though usually I like to go for brighter background and then I'm also just going to shift the color slightly around making it a little bit more blue and giving it a little bit more purple but I also think it's a bit too much now so we can pull down the saturation of the blue a little bit and now I think we need to go a little bit brighter and then we can go back to our normal overall panel and just see if we want to do any more changes to the photo. I think it can take a little bit more dehaze. I can make it a little bit more bright. Maybe add a few more blacks overall. And then we can just crop the photo a little bit as well to make it as pleasant as possible, keeping a nice flow of the wave going. And that's pretty much the photo done. We could do some more to it. For instance, what I think we could do here is add a little gradient to one of the corners. So we go back to the mask, add another mask and add a linear gradient to the corner down here. And I would just pull down the exposure a little bit so we darken it slightly. And then I might also do the same on the opposite side, but I brighten it slightly. So pull down the gradient, not too much over the bird and lighten that corner slightly. Definitely something you don't have to do, but it's something that's quite nice to do in Lightroom to just shift the light around in a photo a little bit. For instance, that corner near the bird was a little bit bright and the other corner was a bit dark. So you can balance that out with the gradients, for instance. The next image for today is of this Seaside Sparrow I captured in 2008 in Texas. It's also an 8 megapixel file and a lot of things went wrong there. First of all, the birds in the bushes, but there's nothing I can do about that. But then I way overexposed it because I was using the flash and I didn't put the flash in high speed mode. So it only photographed it as a 200th of a second. The image is too bright and there's just a few things in this shot that I don't like. But because it's basically my only image of this species, I thought it was worthwhile editing for this video. I'm going to edit this image in Photoshop because you may have guessed already, there's a few things I want to remove and that's definitely going to be easier to do in Photoshop. And if you guys want to learn all about image editing in Photoshop and how to get the absolute most out of your photos in Photoshop, use layers, use the liquefier, cloning, all these things, make sure to check out our masterclass that will help you with that tremendously. I've now opened a Sparrow image in Adobe Camera Raw. As you can see, it's very similar to Lightroom and I'm going to make a few adjustments now. First of all, I'm just going to lower the exposure a little bit so I can see what the profiles will do. And then I go to my go to profile, the vibe and more contrast. And we can see with one click, it already has given me slightly better colors. So I can go and work from here. Definitely going to add some blacks to the image. We also want to add a bit of vibrance and it's ever so slight magenta. So we're going to add a tiny bit of green and maybe a tiny bit of saturation that already got us to a much better starting point. Now we can also pull the shadows down slightly and maybe just pull the highlights down a little bit so we're not going to blow out. So I still think the bottom of the image here is quite bright. And so in camera overall, we also have these masks available. So we can go over here, we can go to the linear gradient, pull that up slightly onto the bird, that's okay. And then I'm just going to pull down the exposure a little bit and the highlights. And that just gives me a slightly more even look at the bottom of the image. And 
think at this stage I'm ready to open it up in Photoshop. So now we've opened up this file in Photoshop. I'm sure you've guessed already that there's a few things that I want to remove from the file. And in the end, this is personal preference, how much you want to remove. I'm probably going to remove a little bit more also to show you how to do it. But in the end, you may leave it like that and say, I'm happy with the way it is, or you remove it just like me to get a more clean looking image. I think that's up to you in the end. And if this was a really common bird, I probably wouldn't bother doing so much to the image, but because this is my only photo of one, I want to put in a little bit more work. So first of all, to do anything to the image, we don't want to do it on our background layer. So we'd want to do it on a copy of the background layer. So we just drag the layer to the little plus sign down here and it creates a new layer for us. And now we have different tools available in Photoshop. I'm sure you've heard about the generative AI fill, which will undoubtedly do a pretty good job here. The only problem is that it doesn't work very accurately for these sort of things on like a smooth background. If you select like half the perch and then remove it, for instance, in smaller areas, it works really well. But if you use a large area, as I can show you now, it will actually give us not a fantastic result. So we can just draw, out, draw around here all the things we want to remove and let it just generate what it thinks it should look like. And now it has actually generated us a pretty good result, hasn't it? The only problem now is I can show you a little trick where you can see that it works a little bit sloppy. If we open a levels layer and just make it look real strange, we can see up here that the generative IR fill doesn't do a fantastic job because it doesn't properly replicate the noise levels in the photo. And that's a bit of a problem, unfortunately. And there's cleaner ways to do cloning. This is definitely the fastest and most effective way of cloning. But if you're cloning or removing something from a large area like this, this can definitely be a problem because you'd see how this will show up. If we were printing this file, for instance, it will likely show up. If you just look at it with bare eyes. You can't see that something is going on, but if with my little levels layer trick, you can see that it definitely did a bit of dodgy cloning and there's actually cleaner ways of doing it, even though it's a little bit more involved, but that's also the workflow that I teach you in my masterclass because it guarantees you the best results. The most effective way I've found to remove things like this is to use the clone tool and the patch tool. If it gets really difficult, I want to do it quickly. I will use the generative AI fill, but I don't think it's a be or and all because of the difficulties that I've shown you already. So what we want to do if we want to remove this branch up there, first we're going to separate it with the clone tool in smaller areas. Up here, and then we just sort of chop that in smaller pieces, chop that up there. This can be pretty rough. We just want to separate it also from the edges of the frame. And now we can go in with our patch tool, circle the area and drag it over. So if we now use my little levels layers trick and see what the patch tool has done, we can see it hasn't done a perfect job. It needs a little bit more cleaning up. But overall, it has done a much better job of keeping the integrity of the background than the generative AI fill have done. And that's why I usually like to use the patch tool and the clone tool if I want to make a nice and precise job. So let me just remove the rest here. So this image is a little bit tricky because I don't want to remove too many things to make it look completely fake, but I also don't want to have the distracting sticks in a shot. So I think I'll just going to remove one more, the one here in the middle and I break that up again and I might actually use the generative AI fill at the bottom because it will do a better job with the grass and the leaves. But up here, I'll definitely use the patch tool again. And then we can just see what the generative AI fill gives us down here. And you can see the generative AI fill definitely does a fabulous job when they're sort of any grass or any texture involved. And I like that. And looking at this now, it still did a bit of a sloppy job, but down here, and in this case, it probably doesn't matter as much. I think you get perfect results. You would have to use the generative AI fill in the 1280 by 1280 pixel radius. But for something like this, it's impossible because we need to remove the whole thing and can't just use tiny little portions, even though you could probably also cut it all up and you then reuse the generative AI fill, but you may as well use the patch tool then which is actually quicker and uses less resources. So what definitely still has to go here as well is the, the stick that's covering the beak. 
So we're just gonna go in, I'll probably just remove that completely with the clone stamp. So now we've got a pretty good result already with just a few clicks and it comes down to personal preference whether you would want to remove the last two remaining sticks on both sides of the bird as well or not. Personally I think in this shot I might be tempted to actually leave them in to give a bit more sense of the habitat and not do too much to the images but in the end it's up to you. Some people might remove it, I'll probably leave it in this image. And from here what I would do again is my normal masterclass workflow where I will add a level adjustment. Add a little bit of a curve. I'll definitely add a little bit of saturation. So that didn't take too long. With just a few clicks and a few more extra layers, I think I was able to transform this not very nice looking raw file into a very usable, fine looking image. The next image for today is not necessarily a terrible shot, but one of a very difficult to photograph bird, the bufflehead. And I photographed this bird many, many years ago in Vancouver. Back then the cameras didn't have a lot of dynamic range, which makes exposure even harder. And this is also just an eight megapixel file. So there's not a lot of information in this actual photo, but I still think it's worth rescuing because I love the pose of the duck and the nice colors in the water. Now we could edit this photo again in Lightroom and it would be possible, but it would be a lot harder to do because we would end up with a lot of different masks we'd have to put on the bird to work on all the individual parts, bring back the voids and also make sure that we don't get any halos on the top of the head or in the water then. So in this case, I think it's best to use Photoshop because we can be more precise. We won't get any halos and it's actually easier to brush in the changes so they nicely transition from the bird onto the background and you won't see that we made any changes. Because the image is so dark and we need to brighten it a lot, I will actually expose the same raw file twice. Once I will make it nice and bright without even looking at the white areas and then I'll make a second version of that raw file where I pull down all the highlights and make sure that all the detail is in the whites. And then we're going to stack them in Photoshop and get the best of both worlds. Nice whites and nice details in the rest of the image. So let's do that. I duplicated the raw file and now opened the same raw file twice in Adobe Camera Raw. But as you can see, Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom basically look identical. So the first part of what I'm doing now, you could also do in Lightroom. But the second part I'm going to do, you can't do in Lightroom. So for now, I'm just going to open the first file and then make it slightly brighter so we can see what the profiles are doing properly. And I go to my Vibrant More Contrast first, but I think it makes the background maybe a slightly bit too red. So I might just go to the standard more contrast that keeps the background a little bit more golden, which I like. But as you can see, the profile already gives us nice and more details in the bird's head. And now I'm just going to pull up the slider to the point where I think the overall brightness of the image is fine. And I'm kind of disregarding all the white areas. And I don't usually want to pull out the whites all the way to 100% because you can see in certain areas, it's just going to look a little bit funny and it also does things to my background I don't necessarily like. So I just pull that down a little bit and I'm also going to increase the shadows a little bit to get more details on the nice facial areas. And then we're also just going to add a little bit more vibrance to the overall image. Now I also want to run the denoise on both of these images. So I go to enhance 45% again, that seems maybe still a little bit too much. That's got 40%, run that on the two photos. And unlike in Lightroom, it doesn't stack the photo now. So I have to select the DNG to keep editing on it. And now basically I'm happy with how this DNG looks, but for my second one, I still need to make a few changes to make sure that I contain all the white. So it's overall too dark still. So I'm going to lighten the file, but not as much as before. I'm going to pull down the highlights and I'm going to pull up the shadows all the way as well. That makes it much easier for us to brush it in nicely and get a nice transition between the white feathers and the colorful feathers on the bird's face. So as you can see now we created one photo that's nice and bright and vibrant overall and the second photo that looks a bit dull has a couple sort of halos around the head but has good colors in the bird's face and in the white. So what I'm going to do now is open both of these in Photoshop. So I'm going to select this photo, Command or Control A and C to copy it and then Command and V or Control V 
to paste it on top of the other photo. But of course we don't want to have the dirty looking photo on top of the photo. So we need to hide it with a layer mask. And we do that by holding down the Option or the Alt key and pressing down here on the layer mask symbol. That creates a black layer mask. That means everything is hidden now. And now if we use a white brush, we can bring back everything that's hidden in this layer. So if I start brushing here, you'll see I'm going to bring back the darker areas from underneath. The problem is though, as you can see, I'm brushing over the edge. So let's go back. What we have to do is make a selection that allows us to only brush on the bird without creating a halo or anything else. Now the easiest way to do a selection in Photoshop is just to go to the quick selection tool and let it select a subject, very similar to what happens in Lightroom, but it's also not quite precise and there's definitely areas where you'll get some hard edges, I'll show you. So if I start brushing here now on the edge, bring back some of the colors, we can see now that there's quite an obvious sort of line that is starting to happen here. And that's not exactly what we want. We want a nice and smooth transition. So the automatic masking works good, but you need to do a lot of changes and refine the edge to make sure that it looks perfect. So let me show you another trick. And this image is actually quite easy. We can just go to the magic wand. Because it's all the same color, it's pretty easy. Just a few clicks in there and it selects most of the background. And then we can just use the lasso tool and add the rest to our selection there. This doesn't have to be 100%, but it's important that it's nice and 100% on the bird, which it is here. And now what we need to do, we need to sort of feather the edge of our selection. So I like to go to select, modify, expand, and two pixels. That means it brings it onto our bird. And then we go select, modify, feather. And now it means we have a feathers edge on the selection. Now we want to save this selection. You can go new layer, edit, fill, and then black to save it. Or you can click on any of the adjustment layers that will save the selection here. And then if you hide it, it won't interfere with anything. And whenever you hold down the command or the control key and click left on your selection, it will load it again. So now I'll invert it. And when I now click on the black layer mask and use the white brush, I can brush on the bird, bring back all the areas where I want them to bring them back. All the bright white areas, bring some more colors in the colorful areas. And if we zoom in now, you can see this is a perfect transition from the bird to the background and it doesn't look strange at all. And it's a very natural way of bringing out the whites and the brightness in the photo. And if we've gone overboard, we can always go select our black brush and then slightly sort of click along the edge to make sure that it's super nice. But when we look around overall, I think we've already gone from a nice image to now a perfectly exposed image with just the right amount of detail in the white areas. For instance, the advantage now in Photoshop is as well, I can work just with the brush of the one mask. I don't have to make a new mask for every single area that I want to work on. For instance, I can now just use my brush on the same mask and just make the bottom of the image slightly darker, or I can brush a bit more on the belly and do all these kinds of things, which is, I think, a little bit easier to do if you're doing a bit more involved editing like this photo. And from here, we don't have to do much more. I just run my normal masterclass workflow on it. So what I do a levels layer, definitely do a curves layer, Then I'll probably select the background again and also do a selective color layer just to see if I want to shift the colors a little bit, make it glow a little bit more in the yellow channel. And just like that, we have a pretty good result. Of course, we can do some more further editing, some more targeted individual editing, like on the beak or the bird's eye or on the colors on the bird's face. But overall, I think in just a couple minutes, we got a really nice result from a too dark image to a nice and well exposed image that has great details in the whites and also great details in the bird's face. Even though Lightroom has come such a long way, I think that Photoshop is still the ultimate tool to get the most out of your images. But all in all, both of these tools now offer you fantastic abilities to get the most out of files that you've possibly never considered editing in the past because they were too noisy or had some other problems. So being able to now transform these files into usable and great looking final images, I think is fantastic. 
What do you guys think about this trend? Do you enjoy going back to some of your old folders, re-editing them to get the most out of them? Or is this something that you say, no, I want to get it right in the field. I don't want to bother too much with editing. I think editing is a fantastic way to improve your images. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will be able to use some of the tips and tricks that I showed you on your own images. If you did, please give me a thumbs up for the video. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye, guys.